That's wonderful to, to hear. Why don't we thank the team? Um, Karina, you can stay with me for a minute. And um, Great time of worship today, just lifting up the name of Jesus as always. And our, our lovely senior pastors are on holidays, which is really, really nice, isn't it? That they can have a rest and come back. So we're praying that they come back refreshed and revived and um, ready for full of vision to bring the Word of God to us in Jesus' name. And, you know, I, I don't like preaching at the start of the year, um, but the lot has fallen on me because I'm here and I don't get my holidays in quick enough, don't I? So I take the holiday at the most unorthodox time of the year. And one of the things I, I don't like at the start of the year about preaching is that um, it's not trying to, to get a message uh, because normally at the start of a year, for me, the Lord speaks to me and I get about 10 things downloaded in one hit. And it's not trying to find a message, it's trying to find what not to preach on at the start of a year. So that's always been the thing. And I think I've sent my notes in a couple of times this week um, for the screens because uh, the message has changed um, a couple of times. And yesterday, as I was just sitting in my, um, I call it the Holy Ghost chair at home, in the bedroom, there's a chair in the corner, and I sit there, and that's just where the Lord just speaks to me. Uh, and yesterday, I was like, well, my message that I was going to bring today, I felt the Holy Spirit say, that's boring. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And um, he told me something else to speak on. Um, so, are you ready for this? And um, I'm believing God's going to speak to you, that God's going to challenge us, and He's going to guide our year. And, you know, before I get into this word, um, another word that I felt him saying is that this year I saw like a, like a tap, like there was a tap there and it was just sort of dripping a bit, but it had been tightened shut. Um, has anyone ever seen that sort of image before? And I just saw that and I felt like that some people in this room today are feeling that way in terms of just the flow of the revelation that God wants to give you. You feel like I just get a drop here and a drop there, but I saw the Lord put his hand on the tap and just turn it full ball, um, saying that I'm going to increase the revelation that's going to come into your life. I'm going to increase the flow of my, my voice and my word, and it's going to flow again at full capacity in Jesus' name. There's not going to be just a, a trickle here and a trickle there, but today God's turning on the tap in Jesus' name, and the revelation is going to flow again in Jesus' name. Can you say amen to that? That's one thing, and we'll, we'll dig out a few other things. Another thing is um, the word caveat. I just kept seeing the word caveat, you know, like on houses how there's caveats, and and you can't sell them, and there's all these restrictions on those sorts of things, and I just felt like for those in the room today, you've felt like in the last year, there was a bit of a caveat over your life, over your, your, your maturity and your spiritual growth, and I felt the Lord say He's removing the caveats in Jesus' name. So by the end of this message, there's going to be just a new increase upon your life, there's going to be a lift, there's going to be just an increase, and God is going to remove those things that have held you back, those things that have restricted you. Get ready in Jesus' name, because I'm prophesying that by the end of this message, the caveats are coming off in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Amen. I'm more excited than some of you, so maybe that word was for me. I'll receive it. Amen. All right, Father God, we just thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that you're here to speak to us today. We thank you, Lord, that you want to uh, set us up for what you want to do this year. Lord, I pray that all distractions would be removed and that we would hear your word today in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen, amen. Wonderful. Okay. Um, for those who don't know much about me, um, I, over the last few years, have worked, obviously, um, in another job in the secular space. Um, oh no, I don't live at the church, although some of you see my car here every night. Um, I work in a field called child protection and um, it's, it's a field that not everybody likes and it's a field that not everybody enjoys um, but I've been doing that for a number of years and um, there's a new thing every day. So there's new tra troubles, there's new challenges and in that field of work I find that there's so many at my level. I, I have been a director so I've been the highest... Um, practitioner, child practitioner in the organisation. So I get all the complex stuff, all the stuff that just gets escalated up. And they're very complex at times and they're very challenging. And one of the things that I um, have to apply 
to guide what I do, um, there's this principle, and I want to share it with you because it, I felt the Lord just remind me of it to, to teach something today. But one of the things that helps me stay, I guess, in the right space and make the right decisions, because how many of you know when you're dealing with people's lives, uh, your heartstrings can get involved, your emotions can get involved, your own trauma, your own history, your own opinions. And one of the things that helps guide my practice is something that's called the voice of the child. The voice of the child. Everyone say the voice of the child. The voice of the child pretty much means what does the child want? What is the child saying? What does the child need? And you have to try and gauge the voice of the child. And it's the voice of the child that guides your practice and how you make decisions. And it's even more difficult for children who, who aren't speaking yet or children who are nonverbal, um, but you can still gauge their voice. And how you can do that, let me just, let's, let's teach this for a sec. I know I might recruit a lot of you to come work in the field. Um, but one of the ways you can gauge a child's voice who is nonverbal, maybe a toddler or a baby, is to, you check their attachment to the parent. So if I say, come to me, and they don't want to, they don't want to leave mum, they're holding on, they're holding on to dad, you can see that they, they feel safe there. Um, or if they do come to me, and they reach back and they want mum, they want dad, you can see, okay, there's something healthy here going on. They're not holding on to me for dear life saying, never return me again. They're reaching back out. And so there's other nonverbal ways to, I guess, gauge a child's voice. Um, and that's just one way. And that voice of the child is paramount to my practice as a practitioner. But what about as Christians? What guides our practice as believers? What is it? And I believe that just like in my field of work, it's the child's voice. As a Christian and a believer, it's the Lord's voice. It's the Lord's voice. And we are, as Christians, should be guided by the Lord's voice. A lot of Christians are guided by Facebook. A lot of Christians are guided by what their family thinks, what their workplace thinks, what their experience has been, um, guided by people's opinions. But that's not what the Bible teaches as is a Christian. The Bible teaches that Christians, people who follow Jesus, actually follow his voice. Follow his voice. And so today I want to I wanna show you in Matthew chapter 4. Let's look at this for a sec. Talking about the Lord's voice today. Matthew 4 verse 3. All right, Jesus is in the wilderness and says, The temp tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, and he's referring to the Scriptures, um, the Logos Word of God. But he says, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word. Everyone say word. Word that comes from the mouth of God. And that word, word, a lot of people have quoted that saying, um, You have to read the Bible. You know, you live by the Bible, which is true. But that word, word, doesn't mean the Scriptures. It's the word rhema, which for the Word of God in the New Testament, there are two words. One is logos, which means the Scriptures. One is rhema, which means the spoken Word. And it's actually saying it is written in the logos, in the Word, that man shall not live by bread alone, but on every spoken Word, everything that God has said, everything that God is saying, a rhema Word. And when we hear the verse that um, talks about, uh, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, I've heard people say, it's, you've got to read your Bible, um, you know, because that creates faith, which it does. But that text is actually saying that faith comes by the rhema spoken word of God because there was no actual full Bible when that was said. It was relying on the spoken word of God and obviously the law. And the Spirit of God speaking by the rhema, the spoken word. How cool is that? And so, I want to talk about being guided by the voice of God. The title of this message is Guided by the Voice. And I think sometimes in Christian circles, and I mean, I've, I've noticed that at times there's myths around God's voice. There's a lot of myths around and people have been hurt by people who've said, God told me. Hello, I'm here to pray. I'm not on holidays. I'm in, I'm working. 
But people have said, God told me this. And, it, and people have been hurt by things like that. Or people have thought, another myth is people have thought that hearing the voice of the Lord is only for people who are weird. Because people have misrepresented God's voice and made it look weird. But actually, can I encourage someone, when I would say about the caveats, hearing the voice of God is actually not as weird as you think. Each one of us can hear the voice of God. How good's that? Each one of us hears God speak to us. And so I want to I wanna have a look at this, and I want to simplify how we can be guided by God's voice this year. Amen. Who wants to do that? He doesn't want you to be guided by your bank account. He doesn't want you to be guided by the news. He doesn't want you to be guided by your past. He wants you to be guided by the voice of the Lord. How good is that? So let's have a look in a text in John chapter 10. And this is just the most amazing thing. So he says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize, everyone say recognize. The sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. Everyone say know his voice. All right, now there's this, as you read this, there's these layers and there's this depth to it. So first of all, they come to him because they recognize his voice. Can I just encourage everyone here who has been saved that the only way you came to him is because you heard his voice. You recognize something of God has spoken to you. Maybe through a preacher, maybe through a time just in worship, God pulled you to himself uh, and you heard his voice. And the word voice in this um, in the Greek, actually is um, phone, which is actually not uh, just sound. It's actually more broad. So the word voice, he means language or communication. And so he's saying, the, my sheep recognize how I communicate. That's what God's saying in this. My sheep recognize my language. My sheep know how I speak. And how many of you know, God doesn't, I, I've never heard God audibly speak to me. I've never heard that. Some, some of you might have. But I've heard him speak to me in other ways. I've heard his communication. I've heard his language. And he's saying, he, my sheep, they recognize. And for those who are, have been saved, we, we recognize in that moment that God was speaking to us, that God was drawing us, that God was communicating with us. Amen. We recognize. But then he, it says they recognize his voice. He calls them. They follow him. And after following him, here's the storyline. Uh, it says, after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. So when I, when I first got saved, I recognized that God was calling me. I recognized this is God speaking to me. This is God communicating with me. But after following him for a bit, I don't just recognize his voice. I know his voice. Two different things. Two different things. I now know when God's speaking to me. And so they won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Oh, wait, oh, that's the top again. I just went straight to the top again. Look out, maybe I do need a holiday. <laughs> Those who heard Jesus uh, use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I'll tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. Okay, they will come and go fr freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. A hired hand will run when he sees a wolf coming. Um, he will abandon the sheep because they don't belong to him and he isn't their shepherd. And so the wolf attacks them and scatters the flock. The hired hand runs away because he's, only, or he's working only for the money and doesn't really care about the sheep. How many of you have some colleagues like that in the workplace? Um, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them also and they will listen. Everyone say listen to my voice. 
and there'll be one flock with one shepherd. And there's this really beautiful uh, uh, layer that gets played out in this. First, we recognize his voice. But then uh, we follow him. We hear his voice. We follow him because we know his voice. There's recognizing his voice. There's knowing his voice. And there is listening to his voice in that text. And they're all three different things. Many of us have recognized God speaking or we've, you know, we've heard him, but we haven't done it. How many have done that? I've done that heaps of times. But there's recognizing, then there's knowing, then there's listening. Three different ways we can work with the voice of God in our life is number one, they recognize the voice. Everyone say recognize. Number two, they know the voice. Number three, they listen to the voice. I love that. And I like this passage because it makes hearing the voice of God very simple and very easy. It's actually not as complicated as people have made it to be sometimes. He says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep. So whether you like it or not, when you got saved, you became a sheep. I know, and some of us are more woolly than others and a bit more, you know, we need a bit more of a, the crook than others. But we all, whether you like it or not, you got saved and God calls you a sheep. So, ba 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 ba. <laughs> right? But as part of that package, um, you inherited the ability to hear the voice of God. You were just, it was just given to you. My sheep, hear my voice. That's it. Not my sheep have to dig themselves into the ground for eight days to hear my voice. Now, if you feel to do that, that's fine. But we put all these rules around the voice of God and Jesus is simply saying, my sheep, hear my voice. And I feel like there's going to be a caveat lifted off people today who feel like, oh, I just, I don't hear the voice of God or, or I struggle because of this, I struggle because of that. Sorry, you hear the voice of God and there's nothing you can do about it to take it away. You are a sheep, you hear the voice. You are saved, you heard the voice. You recognize the voice at salvation and it's that voice that you hear on a day-to-day basis. The real challenge is, how do I know if, it, if I'm hearing the right voice or the wrong voice? Is it, is it just my mind? Is it God? Is it the KFC I had last night? Like, I know, because the KFC, when I have it, I hear things. <laughs> like, go to the gym, but I don't think that's the Lord. I think it's the KFC. It's the devil or the KFC. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, go to the gym, but... No, it does say to look after your body, so there you go. But it doesn't say go to the gym, because there's no gyms back then. But, so what I'm doing, what I'm demonstrating right now is that you can grab anything you like and say, God told me. You can twist it, you can bend it, but how do you know if you've actually, if you're hearing God? And I want to, good question, thank you for asking. I want to give you a couple of things from, from the Bible on how do we know. So number one, here it is. If we're going to be guided by the voice, number one, the Word of God. The Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All Scripture is inspired by God. So it's God-breathed. It's from the Spirit of God. And He's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. So we've got the Bible. Uh, And I know many times we waste our time, we're trying to listen for a voice when we should be looking for a verse. I'll say it again. We waste our time just listening for a voice when we should be looking for a verse. Because God's not going to say to you anything that contradicts the Bible. He's not going to speak to you anything that's not already in His Word. That's not already in line with his word, which is why, can I just give give a challenge to us as a church this year, let's read our Bibles, let's open up the book, let's spend some time with the Lord, let do a devotional, do a plan, I don't know, look up some podcasts, whatever you need to do to get into the word of God, dig yourself deep in the word of God, because whatever you hear in this world, if it's not in line with that, it is not the voice of the Lord, and how are you going to know if it is, you've been digging deep, and you know what the Scriptures say. You know the Bible. 
Can I encourage us to do that, to go deeper this year than we've ever been before? Imagine how our church would change if we all just read a little bit extra, if we all just dug a little bit deeper, if we all just searched a little bit more, if we all just found out what the context of this passage is and got the God speaking us through the Scriptures. How good's that? We'll know. It'll ground us and we'll know. And so, you know, when um, we're dealing with children um, who are nonverbal, we're guided by, there's a manual that we go to, and it's called the best interests. So what we do is we go, okay, we can't really hear what the child's saying, we can see this, but what's, we can gauge their voice because we have sort of a manual that talks about what's best for children, like, you know, shelter and all those sorts of things, stability, and so we go to that manual. And can I just encourage us, when it feels though God is not speaking, go to the manual. Amen. And some, you know, some people say stupid things. Like, I've heard Christians say, you know, when coronavirus came out, Jesus is coming, God told me Jesus is coming back in three years. And they posted it on Facebook. But if they'd read their Bible, they would see that it says no one knows the time or the hour. Not even the son knows. So only the father knows. So what makes you think you're that crash hot that you and the father get to know and everyone else doesn't get to know when in the Bible it says only he knows? So, anyways, praise God. The voice of the Lord will never contradict the word of the Lord, the word of God. Number two, the spirit of God. So we've got the word of God helps us to know what God's saying, but then we've got the spirit of God with us. And if we look in um, the book of Acts, Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Here's some examples. You know, I believe as a Pentecostal boy that the Spirit of God speaks to His people. The Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit speaks. Let's look at this. On uh, one day, as these men were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, The Holy Spirit said, Appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. So after more fasting and prayer the men laid their hands on them and sent them on their way. And what a great leadership principle. Hey, the Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit told them to put this in order. The Holy Spirit spoke to them and told them to fix this up. And um, if we have a look, let's go to Acts chapter 20. I'm going to skip a verse for time. Acts chapter 20, verse 22. Paul's saying, And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me. Here's a guy where the Holy Spirit, he's talking to him. And he says, the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. Thank you, Holy Spirit, I would have said. Thanks for the heads up. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord, Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. So here's a guy who is being compelled by the Spirit to go somewhere where he knows he's going to go to jail, he knows he's going to cop it, he knows he's going to get persecuted, uh, but the Spirit is telling him and he's deciding to do what the Spirit's telling him to do more than what he wants to do himself, and he goes. Simple principle that the Holy Spirit still talks to people today. Can you say amen? How many of you believe that the Holy Spirit still talks to people today? God's not silent. He's speaking by His Spirit. His Word speaks, and so does the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I love when the Holy Spirit speaks. You know, a number of years ago, I was preaching in a crusade, and, and there was this young girl, she was about 14, and um, I didn't know her from a bar of soap, and I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to point at her, which is always a risky maneuver, but I did it. And I was, I was, oh, I was about 18 years old, so I was risky enough just to, all right, whatever. So I pointed at her, didn't know what I was going to say, but when I pointed at her, the first thing, something just flowed out of my mouth, and I pointed, and it, and it was, Patricia, and she looked up like this, and her eyes were like, massive, and she yelled out back at me, and she said, how do you know my name? And I said, well, I don't, but the Holy Spirit knows your name, and He wants you to know that you are not forgotten, that you are noticed by Him, um, and that night, she gave her life to the Lord. And she's a Christian now. She's a Christian now today, following Jesus, Patricia. And that wasn't me. The Holy Spirit spoke and said, do this. Amen? So don't ever be 
scared of the Holy Spirit. Uh, as you walk with the Holy Spirit, He'll speak to you. The Word of God, the Spirit of God speaking to each one of you. And I believe that this year, God, you know, he was, He's been challenging me at the start of this year. I was just praying like, what are you saying? And I get like 10 downloads at once. And then, you know, I don't hear much for the rest of the year. But anyways, um, I get these downloads and then I felt like the Lord's challenging me saying, Aaron, this year, you're going to be guided by my voice. You're going to be guided at every turn, at every corner. I'm going to speak to you. You're going to know my voice more than you've known before. I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to walk with you. You're going to listen more than you've ever listened before. You're going to recognize my voice more than you've recognized it before. And since then, I've seen God speak to me in just the most random ways, through things I've driven past, through encounters I've had, and I've felt like the Lord is speaking to me. How can it not be the Lord? And I believe that this year for each one of us as a church, He's saying, be guided by my voice. Be guided by my voice. Let Lift the caveat off. My sheep, hear. My sheep. It doesn't say my prophets here, my pastors here. It doesn't say my people who've been serving me for 25 years only here. It's just sheep here. How good's that? So each one of us hears the voice of God. So don't think, oh, I've got to just run to this one person or these two people because they're the oracle of God. No, you can hear God's voice for yourself. And some, you know, people have relied on people to give them the voice. Well, can I just say, start relying on yourself to hear the voice of God. That's when you're going to grow. Amen. And you won't need to come to me once a week. You can go to God every day and He'll speak to you and His Holy Spirit will guide you in the name of Jesus. Amen? Number three. Woo! I feel the Spirit right now. Number three, the people of God. So the Word of God, the Spirit of God, but now we've got the people of God. How many of you know God speaks through His people? This is how we're guided by God's voice. And it's all of these things in the right balance together. Because I have, you know... Um, often said, well, this is what I feel God's saying to me because it's in the Bible. And then I've had a council of people in my life saying, that's actually not what it means. It means this. So you might have heard a bit off. And I've gone, okay. But thank God for those people. Thank God for those people because God brings people into the mix to help test and to help judge what God's saying. And if you don't believe me, let's go to a verse in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And here's a talk, at the context is talking about in um, services, you know, they were getting a bit out of order, everyone was doing this and people were trying to do their own thing and women were calling out and all these sorts of things were happening and he gives them a blueprint really just to say, hey, order in the church, sort it out. If someone's going to prophesy, give someone a crack, give another person a crack. But what they were having is someone, everyone was just having a crack at it. And so he's like, let's bring some order back into the church. And here's what he says in verse 29 as well. Let two or three people prophesy and let others evaluate what he said. Let others evaluate what he said. That's cool. Because whenever someone prophesies, there should be people that don't just go, oh, well, that's the word of God. No, no, no. Evaluate what's said. And go, is that in the Bible? Is that, does that line up with what God would say? Is that, are you with me? I know people don't like that side of it, but that's what it's there for, to protect the church and to protect the sheep, that we evaluate the prophetic words that are said and people are there to bring, uh, you know, that guidance. I know, hey, the first time God spoke to me ever was through a person, through a person. And I was seven years old at the time. I was in Sunday school and our Sunday school teacher would teach us how to hear the voice of God and... We split off into groups and there was about five in my group and I remember sitting there and we played this, they called it a prophetic game. So we played, I love them. Um, I want to do them in kids this year, but let's, let me tell you the game first and see if you all approve. Um, that's, this year I'll be running all my kids' ideas through the congregation, so whenever I preach. Uh, but there was five of us sitting in a thing and one person had to close their eyes and God would show them someone in our circle. So they had to close their eyes, and whoever came to them, that was the person. They're not allowed to tell anyone, so they sit there quiet. And we go around the circle, and everyone had a crack at saying what they either saw, heard, or felt, um, as the Holy Spirit showed them. So, and when, you, when kids do this, it flows, I'm telling you now, it flows. And 
we went around the circle. Um, long story short, one kid said, I see someone um, hugging a teddy bear. And then, um, anyways, the next one went, I see someone crying. The next one, um, I see someone, they're hugging the teddy bear, but um, I see Jesus hugging them. And then it got to me, and I was sobbing at that point. I didn't even have a word because the word was for me. And what it was um, is they did not know this. And when it got to the end, the person said, yeah, uh, it was Aaron that, you know, I saw. And I, because my parents separated when I was about seven, I would cry every night with my teddy in my bed, wishing that, you know, things would be all right. And when it got to that last person, they said, I see, like, Jesus hugging that person. And in that moment, I felt just the love of God. Like, God knew, he had my ticket, he had my number, he knew what I was going through. As a seven-year-old, God spoke to me. And that was the first ever time, never forget it, that God spoke to me through other people, through the people of God. How good's that? Um, another story, Heather's here, I've told this story before, but it's never, it's, it's, you know when God speaks to you and there's these ma- massive moments where you just never forget them? Well, Heather gave me a word once. I came in here, you know, I was, a few years ago, I was, you know, on the ed- edge of just a breakdown, I was very broken, and Heather came up to me, I was sitting about here, after the word, Heather walks up to me, she doesn't know me, she goes, I have a word for you. She puts both hands on my shoulders, looks me straight in the eye. Um, you get a bit scared when people do that because you think they're going to tell you all the, all the dirt. But prophecy will always edify, exhort, and comfort. That's what the New Testament says. And so you should never be afraid of the prophetic. Um, and if people are prophesying to condemn or bring down, they're a false prophet. Um, but Heather walks up to me and she's... Um, speaks this verse to me and she says, I just have a verse. A bruised reed he will not break and a flickering candle he will not snuff out. Now to other people, that, they probably thought, what poem is she going from? You know, what does that mean? But what it was is that was the very verse that was prophesied over me when I came into ministry. And I was standing here on the front row thinking, am I going to do it again? Probably not. Nah, I'm not. And I'm wrestling with God in the front row saying No. And I feel God drawing me, no, no. And then I feel God saying, just, you know, at least sing. <laughs> it's like we're, we're trying to compromise me and God. At least go on the worship team, no. And then Heather walks up, a bruised reed he will not break. And it's like I got called all over again, right from the start. And I went to, uh, that afternoon there was a jam sesh in here and I came along and had a sing. So praise the Lord. God speaks through his people. God does speak through his people. All right, number four, here we go. There's five of them, by the way. So we've had the Word of God, the Spirit of God, the people of God, but now we've got, what are we? The Son of God. I know, this is um, an interesting one. So Hebrews chapter one, um, let's have a look at that verse one. It says, long ago, God spoke many things and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. And now, everyone say now. Now, in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. How good's that? Um, Let's go, let's look at it in the Amplified because I love this. God God having spoken to the fathers long ago in the voices and writings of the prophets, in many separate revelations, each of which set forth a portion of the truth, and in many ways has in these last days spoken, watch this, with finality to us in the person of the one who is by his character and nature, his son, namely Jesus, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. So we find here that he's saying, you know, in, in the old days, God spoke through the prophets and he still does today and there is a place for prophets and the prophetic. But he's saying in these days, in the last days, he's spoken to us also through his son, Jesus. So in other words, if you want to know what God's saying, look at Jesus. Check Jesus out. What's Jesus done? What's Jesus saying? What, what did Jesus do? That's, that's the prophetic. And I'll show you in Revelation. Let's have a look there. Chapter 19, verse 9. Here we go. And then the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Then I fell down at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, now watch this. So the angel of the Lord's given him a word. 
and he's fallen down to worship the angel. And the angel's like, hold on. Hey, buddy, don't get me out of a job. The angel's saying, listen, watch this. Um, he says to them, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. And he said, the angel says, hey, worship God. Watch this. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what he's saying there is, don't worship me because prophecy doesn't come from me. Prophecy comes from Jesus. And it's prophecy is not just from Jesus. Prophecy is about Jesus and it will bring glory to Jesus. And that's what he says when he says the, the uh, testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So can I just encourage us that some of us, you know, thank God that he speaks to us. But we don't need to really hear much more. Oh no, because he's already spoken through his son. God has already spoken through the son, Jesus. So if, thank God that he speaks to me, I love that. But if he never spoke to me again, he said enough by putting his son on a cross. And Jesus said, it is finished. So I don't really need to hear much more unless God wants to tell me, and thank God that he will, but he has spoken through his son. And some of us are saying, oh, God speak, God speak. Well, can I just encourage us? Maybe we need to listen to what he's already said. And I remember there was a time when I was like, I'm not hearing God. What are you saying? And I felt like the Lord gently say, because I'm waiting for you to do the last thing I said. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord. I've, I, I don't need to speak because I've spoken. So come back to that word. Apply it and do it and do what I've asked you to do. Thank God there was still time for me to do it and it hadn't expired, did it, and then sometime later, I started hearing him again. Because he's already spoken through his son. So if anything that someone says, God said, and it doesn't line up with Jesus, what Jesus did, who Jesus is, what Jesus came to do, that is not the voice of God. Is this okay? <laughs> Ooh, it's a bit, you know. Good. All right, the last one. Karina, you can come back. The last one, the character of God. This is my favorite. John 10, verse 14. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me, just as my father knows me, and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. In this chapter 10, he's talking about my sheep recognize. They know my voice. They listen to my voice. But even more, it says they know me. They know me. Funny thing about, you know, being married is that I know what Amy's going to say about certain things. I know what she's going to do. And some of you have been married a lot longer. You probably know a bit more. Um, but Amy knows what I have for breakfast, what my options are. Would you like a boiled egg, a green tea, or some crumpets in the morning? She'll say to me. And I'm just like, she knows me. She knows my options because she knows I'll never ask for wheat beaks. I'll never ask for anything else. I always ask for a boiled egg, a green tea, or crumpets with honey on them and a little bit of butter. Yum. <laughs> Sorry, I just went to another place. All right, back, back to the message, Aaron. But the reality is she knows my voice. I haven't had to ask. She knows my voice because she knows me. She knows what I'm going to say before I say it. So she doesn't sometimes have to hear me say it because she just knows me. How good's that? And I know that when it feels like God's not speaking, I know him, his character, because I've spent some time with him. That's, um, that's good enough for me for now. Um, and I just want to release people today of stress, of, oh, I'm not hearing God, or is he speaking? I don't know. My sheep here. My sheep here. And if you haven't heard him one way, you've heard in the other. The character of God. The character of God. How many of you have got friends or, you know, loved ones or family that if something is said at a table or whatever, you look at each other and you know what each other's thinking? Who's ever done that? And you just pull a face. And you even know the face. But no one else knows the face. My aunties all perch their lips. And I know whether they agree with what the person's saying or not <laughs> as to whether they perch their lips. If they perch their lips, then that person has said rubbish. And they will never be invited back to the table. 
But because I know my aunties, I know their voice. I know, I know their character. I know what they're going to do. I know what they're going to say. And I felt the Lord just saying today that He wants to release the caveats off our lives around, do I hear God? Do I know His voice? I want to tell you, my sheep hear my voice. The Word of God. Everyone say the Word of God. Say the Spirit of God. Say the people of God. Say the Son of God. And say the character of God. How good is that? His character. Just knowing Him. So my sheep know me. They know me. I want to encourage each one of us. Let's get to know the Lord a bit more this year. Just know Him. I don't know. I've, I feel like I want to just start again. I feel like I want to say, okay, I, I haven't reached my capacity of knowing everything there is to know about the Lord. I reckon we all know a drop compared to what He is and who He is. So as we know Him, we begin to know His voice. We begin to know what He says. We begin to know what He's going to say. My sheep hear my voice, hear my language, hear my communication, God's communication. And I pray today that God would just begin to keep speaking to you in Jesus' name. Come on, stand with me for a minute. Stand with me. May we be guided by His voice this year in everything that we do, His promptings. And um, I'm believing that there's going to be, you know, um, we, we just make hearing the voice of God so weird, but I, I think it is normal, supernaturally natural to have a dream from God. And I'm believing that there's people in this room, you're going to have dreams from God. And there's people in this room, you used to get dreams from God and it's like the tap has stopped and there's just a drop here and a drop there. But I see the Lord turning that tap on again. In Jesus' name. And the dreams are going to start flowing again. The visions are going to start flowing again. The words are going to start flowing again. It's that communication from the Lord. As you know Him, as you begin to continue to know Him, as you begin to follow Him, as you keep listening to Him. My sheep hear. My sheep hear. My sheep hear. My sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. All my sheep hear my voice. And today, I pray in the name of Jesus that those caveats would be lifted in this place where people have either been burnt by people who've said that they've heard and um, it hasn't turned out to how it should have been or people have misused Scripture to uh, manipulate people. I break that over people's lives today in the name of Jesus. I break that disappointment. I break that over them, that, that uh, control over their life and I loose them from it in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that they're going to hear from heaven today. They're going to hear your voice again. They're going to follow your voice again. They're not going to be afraid of your voice anymore. But they will say, I, I know the Father. I know the Father, and therefore I know His voice. And I just thank you, Lord, that people are being spoken to right now. God is communicating to people right now by His Spirit. Because, Lord, we know, just like children, Lord, they communicate in nonverbal ways. We know that you don't always just give an audible voice, but there are other nonverbal ways. There is communication from heaven that you want to release in this place in the name of Jesus. And so I just want to ask everyone in this room, just lift your hands in front of you or up wherever you are. And I'm just going to pray that the Holy Spirit would begin to stir you. The Holy Spirit would begin to speak to you. Like in the book of Acts, the Spirit said, the Spirit said, you're going to have moments this year, you're going to have encounters this year where it will be the Spirit has said. The Spirit has said. And you're going to go and that thing's going to work out because you're going on a word from God. And I pray, Lord, that each person in here, Lord, they would hear from heaven through all those different ways you speak to us. Thank you, Lord, that you know how to get your voice to us. You know how to get your voice. And for those who feel like you've been silent, I pray, Lord, that they would go back to just what you've said in your word, your character, your son, Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that they begin to hear again, that those airways, those, those ears would open in the name of Jesus and they begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Justin and Tiff.